Hello and welcome to Mr. Brain's fifth grade everyday math review. In this lesson, we're going over lesson 6.1, multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. And I'd like to start off reviewing powers of no powers of 10. So if we have 10 to the third power, we would say this is written in exponential notation. 10 is considered the base, 3 is the exponent, and 10 to the third power is the same as 10 times 10 times 10, and 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Now, with this, you might notice that when we do 10 times 10 times 10, there's three zeros. And 1,000 has three zeros. It's something to remember. So we're going to, uh, in this video, we're going to be taking those uh, powers of 10, and we're going to be multiplying them by decimals. So the first one I'd like to do is 3 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third power. Now we already talked about how 10 to the third power is the same as 1000. So one thing I want you to think about when you're multiplying decimals uh, times powers of 10, then I'm going to look at just the greatest place. So here it's the, the 3. The 3 is worth 3 because it's in the 1's place. So I want to think 3 times 1,000. Well, I know that 3 times 1,000 is 3,000. And that gives me four digits. So when I come back up here to, my, to the top, um, I'm going to have to have four digits in my answer. The 3 and the 4 always stay next to each other and to fill in these last two places I'm going to need to put zeros. So 3 and 4 tenths or 3.4 times 10 to the third equals 3,400 and I'll put in my comma there. So that's one way of thinking about problems like this. Another way that you'll see people work on problems like this is they will move the decimal point. So if I, now if I have three, uh, 3 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third power, I'm going to think about sliding this decimal place to the right. So the first time we slide it, that's the same as multiplying it by 10. So now the decimal point is right here. But we're not multiplying it just by 10, we're multiplying it by 1,000. So, if I slide it one more time, that's times 10 again. And then a third time is times 10 again. So, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. My decimal point ends up at the back. And then for my two spots here, I have to go ahead and add in my two zeros. And so, as you can see, uh, whether you choose to slide the decimal point or think about it um, in this previous way, you're going to end up with the same answer of 3,400. Now, we can use similar strategies when we're dividing by powers of 10 compared to when we're multiplying by powers of 10. So, as you can see, I've got 467 and 5 tenths divided by 10 to the second power. Um, or you might hear some people say 10 squared. And uh, like the previous multiplication problem, I'm going to look at the greatest place here. So this 4 is in the hundreds place, so it's worth 400. 10 to the second power, I'm going to write this down here for now. 10 to the second power is the same as 10 times 10. And 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm going to think about 400 divided by 100, 
and I know that 400 divided by 100 is going to be 4. So now I can come up here to my original number, 467 and 5 tenths divided by 10 to the second power. Well, that's going to be close to 4. So the closest I can get to 4 would be if I took my decimal point and put it right here. So now I'm going to write that new number off to the side here. Be 4 decimal point, 6, 7, 5, or 4 and 675 thousandths. Now using that same problem, and let me grab a new color here, using that same problem, uh, I'm going to start with my original number, 467 and 5 tenths, divided by 10 to the second power, so again that's divided by um, 10 times 10 or divided by 100. When we multiplied, we slid the decimal one place to the right for every time we multiplied it by 10. For dividing, it's just going to be the opposite. We're going to move it to the left. So 467 and 5 tenths divided by 10. Okay, so divided by 10. And then we're going to divide by 10 again. Divided by 10. So 10 and 10, 10 times 10 is 100. So 467 and 5 tenths divided by 100 by sliding the decimals. We still get our decimal point in the same spot. You can see it's a match. So 4 and 675 thousandths. Now if we move on to one last sample problem here. And the last one I want to do here is 2 and 3 tenths divided by 10 to the 4th power. And I know that 10 to the 4th is the same as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And that equals 10,000. So I'm going to have... 2 and 3 tenths divided by 10,000. Now our previous strategy is a little bit harder to think about with this and so I'm just going to move straight into um, moving the decimal point. So we have to move the decimal place four times based on these four tenths here. So 2 and 3 tenths divided by 10 once divided by 10 twice divided by 10 three times and divided by 10 four times so our decimal point is going to end up right here for the remaining portion um, of these the loops that we made here we have to put a zero above each loop so that's our answer two and three tenths divided by four or excuse me ten to the fourth power is going to give me zero decimal zero 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 twenty three So remember, as you go through your, when you're multiplying by decimals, you can think about multiplying by um, whatever power of 10 it would be. So times 10, times 100, times 1,000. Or you consider moving the decimal to the right uh, one spot for every time you multiply by 10. Or dividing by uh, powers of 10 is just the opposite. For every time you divide by 10, you move the decimal one place to the left. For our practice problems today, we have some fraction addition. So our first problem is going to be one third plus five twelfths. And there's a number of ways 
to find a common denominator, but like I've said in previous videos, I like to go with the multiples. So I'm going to start by finding the multiples of 3. So I've got 3, 6, 9, 12. And I can stop there. I don't have to do any more because 12 and 12, I can use that for my least common multiple, or I can use that for my common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself two new denominators. For the top part, to make an equivalent fraction, I know that 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 times 4 is 12. If I do 3 times 4, I also have to do 1 times 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. So 1 third is equal to or the same as 4 twelfths. When I get to the bottom portion, 5 twelfths, I don't have to change anything because I 12 is... 12 and 12 are the same. So if 12 and 12 are the same, my numerator has to be the same. So that will be 5 twelfths. And now, now that I have a common denominator and I know my new numerators, I can add that together. And then 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths is going to be 9 twelfths. Now, depending on your teacher's expectations, you can leave that as, as at 9 twelfths. Um, or you could simplify it, and I'm not going to go through that process right now because this video is getting long enough already, but that could also be um, 3 fourths, so 9 twelfths or 3 fourths. Okay, one more problem to finish up here for today, and this is going to be a mixed number, so we're going to have 2 and 4 ninths. My cat's in my way right now. So 2 and 4 ninths. And I'm going to add to that 4 and 5 sixths. 4 and 5 sixths. And I'm going to start with the finding a common denominator. And I'm going to find, use the multiples. So I like to start with the smallest number first. So I'm going to go 6, 12, 18, 24. And then let's go up to the top. So we'll do 9 and 18, and I can stop there. So for my um, new denominator, I'm going to use 18. Now there are a variety of other numbers you could have used. Some of you might have found 36, some of you might have found 54. I like to use the smallest one that's the same. So in that case, it's going to be 18. I know that 9 times 2 is 18, so if I do 9 times 2, I have to do 4 times 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. On the bottom, 6 times 3 is 18, so if I do 6 times 3, I have to do 5 times 3, and 5 times 3 is 15. So now I can go ahead and add up my... Um, new fractions, my equivalent fractions, and 8, eight eighteenths plus 15 eighteenths is equal to 23 eighteenths. Now I'm going to add together the uh, whole numbers. 2 plus 4 is 6. So I could leave my answer like that. I could say 2 and 23 eighteenths. Or I could... Um, switch this and make it an improper, or take the improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. And to do that, I do some div dividing. So 23 divided by 18, 23 divided by 18 is 1, 1 times 18 is 18, and I would get a remainder of 5, oops, not a 4, a 5. So the um, quotient becomes my whole number. My remainder is the numerator, and then the divisor is the denominator. So that would be 1 and 5 eighteenths. So 23 eighteenths is the same as 1 and 5 eighteenths. 
So I can take the 1 and 5 eighteenths and add it to the 6, and I would end up with an answer of 7 and 5 eighteenths.